Hello, Marcel here, and I'm going to show you how to have multiple fluid emitters using more than one lucid particle flow operator, how to control cloth tearing and segmentation features when using collisions with convex objects. I will first set up my scene to have multiple particle emitters using a single particle flow system. So I'll just create a particle flow source, and it doesn't matter what it is, we're not actually going to use the icon for emission, so I'll just put it aside, and then I will create my particle containment object. So let's just pretend that we're trying to fill a cup of water with some fluid and I'll just add a cylinder to represent my cup of water. So I'll just go into my modify panel and reduce the number of height segments to one. We don't need all those details. I'll convert this to an editable poly, select the top face and just get rid of it. And then I will apply a normal modifier to flip all of the normals so that the collision object is facing inwards as opposed to outwards. Right click, object purpose backface call to make sure that we see the mesh based on its normal. So our collision mesh is ready. I'll just assign it a static collision object preset and then I'll create a couple of more cylinders and these cylinders will be responsible for actually emitting the fluid. I will just need the top component of the cylinders. I don't need the whole thing. So I'll create it really flat like this. Add edit poly modifier. Select all of the faces that we don't need. We just need the top. Delete. So I'll take this cylinder and I will kind of rotate it so it is looking downwards into my cup and this way we'll be able to fill it with fluid later on. I'll just copy it, rotate it so it's looking at the cup from the other side and these are going to be my two emitters emitting the water. Next up I select my particle flow source, go to particle view. Inside particle view I will create one event and I'll copy it to have the other one. So for this event I'll just change a couple of things. First of all position icon we don't need, we'll use position object instead so I'll just replace that. Inside position object I'll select my emitter and I will add one of the previous cylinders that we created. So if I scroll right now we can see that it is kind of falling down. The direction of the particles that are emitted right now is going down because it is aligning itself with our particle flow icon. So we want to change that. I will replace the speed operator with speed by surface. Just drag this in and replace the speed operator. And I'll select my surface for the speed as well. So now we have the particles being generated perpendicular to our emitter. Next up, I will add my lucid fluid modifier. Just put it here. And I will also add my Lucid display replacing the original display operator. I'll go into my flex settings and I'll change the particle radius to a non-zero value, something like two. And if I simulate right now, we see that we have pretty large particles, but they're being generated and they're going inside of our container as we want it. Next up, we have our second emitter. So I'll just select my whole event and I'll copy and paste. Make sure that you don't paste instance. We actually want separate operators in these two events. You could probably instance the other operators but it's really important that you have both of the lucid fluid and display operators as unique entities inside our particle view. So in here I will just replace a few things. I will go to my position object and remove the previous cylinder. Instead I will add the other one and I will do the same thing for speed by surface. I will replace the cylinder with the second emitter object and now I am ready to add this new emitter to our simulation. I'll just drag this over and connect it into my particle system. And now if we start the simulation, we have particles being generated from both sides. Let me just select the particles from the second emitter and change their color to a different value so we can see the changes. And I'm going to go and tweak some of the settings to make the particles more realistic. I'll change the particle radius to a smaller value and then maybe I'll have more particles being born instead of 200. Let's make it 2000 for now. One other useful thing that we can do is select our particle flow system and Go to system management to change the viewport iteration step from frame to a half frame or maybe even a smaller value. So now when we simulate, we get a lot more particles generated and they are filling up our volume quite nicely. We can select some of the emitters and modify their position. So we can still kind of aim them at the inside of the container, but this time we can change it around so that there are fewer particles that are sort of bumping off of each other and escaping the container altogether. So I'll modify this red fluid to be a little bit further from the container as well. And maybe I will even change their position relative to each other a little bit by moving them to the side to create a little bit of a swirling action. So if I go and drag my slider right now, you can see that the particles are in a little vortex motion. So for the next part of the video, let's look at the controls that you have over tearing cloth. 
To do this, I'll just quickly set up my cloth scene by creating a plane with a whole bunch of different segments, add an edit poly modifier and select all the corner vertices of the cloth so they are fixed and not moved by the simulation and add a cloth preset to this object. Next I will add a box that will just fall onto our cloth and maybe hopefully will cause it to rip apart. Add a flex settings object and change the number of sub steps to a higher value just so that we don't get any particle tunneling going on. And if we simulate right now our box will fall onto our cloth and it will not cause it to rip initially it will just sort of slide off of our object so this is good it's time to modify the parameters of the cloth to actually make this box rip it apart first i will set the tearing value to a non-zero value so some tearing will actually happen and again the bigger value i set here the less force it will take to tear the cloth apart so if i simulate right now we still don't get any tearing happening and mostly through experimentation you can get the value that you actually need using your current force and mass settings inside the simulation so this time this object caused our cloth to tear. One of the other options that you have over the cloth tearing is a new checkbox called prevent extra tearing. And this option will try to resist tearing in vertices that are neighboring other vertices that have already been torn. So if I check this option and I simulate again, you can see that the tearing is happening at a much slower pace and it is in fact creating some strands of cloth along the tear as it happens. So this could add some more realism into your final simulations when simulating cloth being torn by things like your character stretching too much or anything else in that respect. And you could additionally use the cloth tearing map to multiply this tearing value to make the cloth tear more in some places than others in a more controlled and artist friendly way. So you can use these three options to pretty much have great control over how the cloth gets torn in your simulations. So the last thing I wanted to show are some of the improvements we've made to convex meshes collision objects. And to quickly show this I set up a scene where we have a fluid ball falling onto a static collision which is the plane here and then we have a concave object that is composed of two boxes or two separate segments that are aligned in this way. To create this I just used a line with a bevel and a shell modifier on top but this can be any arbitrary mesh and the problem with just using a convex modifier on this is that this object will be converted into a convex hull in which case the area inside here gets filled in by Lucid and we no longer get an empty space during the simulation. To demonstrate this, let me just simulate the scene really quickly and show that when this sphere falls, this area in the middle of our little hollow wall here does not get particles falling inside of it. And this is a problem for many scenarios when your objects are not really fully convex and have some concave parts inside. So to solve this, we have a little convex setting rollout. And by default, we have a setting of none, and then we have a convex hull setting. These two options are mostly identical, except for some scenarios where using none can actually prevent the convex object from being used as a collision inside a flex scene. And this is a limitation of flex, which we have overcome by computing our own convex half of this object. So using this parameter here, we should not see any difference from before. Then we also have two segmentation objects. Segmentation basically takes your collision object and it creates multiple convex hulls inside of it. So in this case, it will probably take this object and break it down into two separate convex objects, one for each part of the wall. Using the quick segmentation, we get a mostly accurate result and this should work for the majority of the cases. The only downside here is that it might take a little bit of an overhead in terms of the startup time during your simulation, but in a simple object like this, this is barely noticeable at all. So if I set this option now, and I have my sphere simulated, the area in the middle here now actually has the particles flow through it. The accurate segmentation object is just a better implementation with higher detail and it will handle nearly all of the concave mesh scenarios and produce perfect segmentation for you. In this case, this is not very visible, but it does take a little bit longer to compute than the quick segmentation object and it will produce a nice set of hulls for all the convex objects. So this adds a little bit more flexibility to the type of the collision object you you can use inside your scene that are animated and not static like we have our base plane here and the only downside of course for convex object is that they cannot be deforming during the simulation but in many cases this is okay and is not really required for objects that are just moving or rotating inside the scene of course for anything that is deforming you would use our sdf collision type instead and that is covered in a separate video so i hope this information gave you a little bit more insight into how lucid works Thank you very much for watching.